So the muscle simulation properties are set with two different nodes, the muscle properties node and the muscle constraint properties node. And for those who are new to this, it might be a little bit confusing why everything is split up the way it is. So I just want to go to a diagram to help explain the differences. Basically, if you know anything about a muscle, you'll know that these white ends are the tendons. This area here is what we call the belly of the muscle. And so the belly of the muscle is made up of muscle fibers, and these are the ones that will contract. Whereas the tendons are made of something else that doesn't contract in the same way. It's flexible, but it's not as stretchy and contracty to use the scientifically correct term um, as the muscle belly. So when we set the physical properties of the muscles, we want to be able to distinguish between the main muscle and the tendon area of the muscle. Furthermore, the very ends of the muscles, not the entire tendons, but just the tips, are where the muscles attach to the bones. So we want to have a separate mask that specifies where the ends of the muscles are. And they obviously overlap somewhat with the muscle tendons, but they're a smaller region than the muscle tendons. And they specify not the properties of the tendon or the muscle itself, but they specify that there needs to be an attachment to the bone in this area. And this is what's going to drive the animation of the muscles. So this needs to be a very stiff attachment. Then in the real world, we have that muscles are all connected together and they are connected by a layer of fascia and then they have fat and skin and all of this helps keep muscles in place. But because we're splitting out the simulation to have the muscles on their own without fascia or fat or skin in the first muscle iteration, we need to add some, let's say, artificial helpers to help keep the muscles in place. One of the ways we do this is with a muscle to bone constraint, and that is going to connect the muscles, not just at the ends, but along the length of the muscle, it's going to connect it to the nearest bone. But this is going to be a lot stretchier than the muscle ends. It's not nearly as stiff. It's about a factor of a million times less stiff. So the ends are a million times stiffer than the muscle to bone constraints. So that is why we split those up into a separate property. And then in this case, we only have one muscle shown, but we also have muscle to muscle constraints, which are going to attach the muscles to each other to stop them from um, separating from each other. And again, that's going to be something of a lower stiffness, not as strong as something like the muscle ends. Um, and both the muscle to muscle, as well as the muscle to bone constraints will be able to slide to allow the muscle to still have a fair amount of motion. Whereas the ends, we don't want sliding that is rigid. That corresponds to a real world physical connection of the muscle to the bones. So I hope that helps to clarify why we have these different settings in all the muscle properties. And next we can continue looking at how the interface for the muscle property and muscle constraint property nodes work.